This is the OMS 2050 dental microscope from Zoomax. I wanted to give you a first look and what I think about the microscope so far. It's been in the clinic for about a week and I've had a great time with it and uh, I'll tell you what I like, what I think could be improved and we'll go from there. So one of the things that really drew me to this microscope in the first place is the horizontal extension. Now I will tell you, I have a spacer. I really like working with spacers. Uh, Zoomax offers 25, 35 and 50 millimeter spacers to bring the oculars out further away from the body of the scope. And the beautiful thing about the OMS 2050 is that the beam splitter is 90 degrees off the body of the scope. So you get really nice and far away from your patient when you're using this microscope. And that's where I personally like to be. Now, one thing that I've noticed is a little bit odd is that the magnification knob is opposite that of the 2380. So zooming in and zooming out is opposite of a different scope from the same company, uh, which I think for most people, you're not gonna have different scopes from the same company, so it would be like a non-issue. But for me, I find that just the muscle memory, I have to remember, okay, oh, I'm gonna turn it this way to zoom in versus zooming out. Um, it's a minor thing, but it is one thing I noticed. Um, you have internal cameras, uh, internal 4K camera built into this microscope, and the way you activate it is this little button here. So you just hit it one time to take a photo, and then you hit it for three seconds and it will start taking a video. I've got mine hooked up over here and this is a photo that I took today um, of a cavity during a procedure. So super easy to do. The, the photos are really, really good quality and for 95% of people, the internal camera is absolutely like gonna blow you away and it's gonna be more than you'd ever need. I, as an educator, do find that there are certain situations where it doesn't provide what I want, and that would be composite. So if I'm restoring composite, I don't want to use a curing filter, I like to turn the light all the way down on the microscope, and then that's when that internal camera starts to struggle a little bit. You start to see some more artifacts, feel like there's this internal noise reduction happening in the camera, and it's just struggling a bit, so it's maybe it's a little bit over-aggressive, and you see some odd issues developing um, with the with the footage. But otherwise, if you're shooting with normal lighting scenarios, it's amazing. So really, really recommend it. If you do want the maximum image quality, you can either use an iPad mini or uh, an iPhone. So this obviously is just the case, but you can put your phone in there and they have different cases for different phones. And like the, the footage you get out of the iPhone is unbelievable. Like you can record beautiful footage and it captures the entire field of view of what you're looking at uh, through the ocular. So I really like the iPhone. I really like the iPad mini. Uh, I'm a bit of a photography snob and they actually outperform mirrorless cameras. So I don't even re recommend mirrorless cameras for, anymore for microscopes because of how good the iPhone and iPad are behaving. But for convenience, the internal camera is the way to go. That would be what I would recommend. Now, one thing that's really unique about the OMS 2050 is that it turns sideways without changing the level of the oculars. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I want to see something to the left, notice how the oculars don't shift. They force you to keep your head in an even position. And it's really good for your head and neck ergonomics. I will say like, you know, it's to an extent, right? Because if you're working like this, obviously your shoulders are going to be a little bit offset from your, your head and neck. So it's not like it's relieving all of your ergonomic problems, but it's, it is nice. Like I actually do prefer it, but I will tell you, it takes a little bit of getting used to because you're working down over here, but you're looking this way. So it's just a little odd at first to get used to it. But I would say within about two to three days of using the microscope, I was getting into a rhythm with it. And now I actually like it more than uh, working with the 2380. So I think it's a really good scope. This also happens to be their entry level microscope, uh, at least globally, I think they may have a less expensive scope within China, but for us around the world, the OMS 2050 is their entry level scope. And like, seriously, to have this level of functionality is pretty incredible. Um, for the inclinable binoculars, you can either get 12.5 or 10 X, um, eyepieces and if you've seen my 2380 video, the one thing I mentioned is that I wish that the lowest magnification was a little bit wider, like a little bit lower, so you have more field of view. And my thought was, is if you switch these out for 10X, you would get 
a um, wider field of view. That doesn't actually happen. You just get the same image circle, but just it occupies less of your visual space inside here. So I can't really show you very well. Um, but essentially that image circle is just smaller with the 10X eyepieces, but it's the same picture. It's almost like you're taking your 50 inch screen within the oculars and turning it down to like a 40 inch screen. That would be the best way I could describe it. Um, but anyways, what I, uh, what I, the reason I mentioned that is that when you are working with the 2050, because the, hor the, the, the beam splitter is coming off horizontally, in order for you to meet the oculars, it actually forces you to lift up the scope more than you would with the scope that has the beam splitter coming up. And that's actually quite nice because it forces the scope further away from the patient. And that gives you your assistant more working space down here. So I find like in between the patient and where the microscope would be or the microscope lens would be, there's way more space for your assistant to work. And also it gives you that wider field of view for you know aesthetic evaluations or exams because you're further physically away from the patient. The objective lens is higher giving you a wider field of view. So I actually really, really like it. Um, I'm very, very thrilled with the microscope. I will say that getting it ceiling mounted was a rigmarole, but we got it done. And once you have that done, it, it is really nice to have a ceiling mounted scope. It's just it's a much cleaner look. Um, on the back of the microscope, now this is like the brand new R5 version of this 2050. And essentially they've just cleaned up the back, but the way it works, is that you have a USB stick port, you got two of those, and then just one for your Bluetooth mouse. And that's essentially so that your assistant monitor becomes like a little interface. So I can control the photos that I took from the internal camera with this little mouse. And it's a uh, pretty, pretty good. I mean, it's pretty convenient to be honest, because like, if you just want to show people stuff, it's so fast. You just jump to the, the mouse after the procedure and you just go through the photos. So really, really nice option. Um, oh, one thing I really like about it is, so I, I do like do going to the lowest light setting for working with composite, as I mentioned. And now there's like a, a hard stop before you go to the lowest setting. So to just give you an idea, I'm at max light right now. And I'm gonna turn the knob and then before it turns off, it stops and that's my lowest light setting. And that's really nice because I can quickly just dial it down and I know I'm at the lowest light setting for working with composite. With the other microscope, the 2380, I found that there's no, there's no hard stop. So you have to like turn it off and then turn it back on to know that you're at the lowest light because you can get a lot of working time with composite at the lowest light setting. Um, oh, one complaint I have. You'll notice that these are not the stock handles. Uh, these are offered by Zoomax, but these ones don't rotate unless you move them out. So these are like traditional microscope handles. They're, you'd see these in older microscopes, but the stock handles are quite irritating in the sense that when you try to turn the scope front to back, so like this, they rotate on you. So especially if you're using like a spacer, uh, because you have to tighten the tension knobs a bit more to get the spacer to balance. But I found that when I was trying to turn the scope front to back, the stock handles would rotate. So if you are considering a 2050, I would highly recommend the black handles, these guys here. Um, they, they're excellent. They work really well. I like to have them in kind of like a steering wheel position, uh, you know, like 10 and 2, so to speak, you know. It's almost like you're driving a car. And yeah, you get excellent maneuverability that way. So. All in all, really, really pleased with the microscope. Uh, ergonomically, it's a dream once you get used to the built-in side-to-side -side function and having your, your head straight. Um, it is disorientating the first time you do it. Just expect that. But then it gets to a point where you're like, wow, this is, this is awesome. So really, really cool. I'm very thrilled. And um, if I have any updates with the scope in terms of uh, like long-term issues, if I, if I see any of those, I'll definitely let you know. But so far, very pleased.